Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is Reverend Nessie coming at you on the 5th of July, 2011. I hope you had a wonderful 4th of July. I did. I stayed inside and, and stayed cool under the air conditioner and the fan. Uh, but I did watch the fireworks uh, on uh, Channel 11 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And it was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. God is good. Uh, I just wanted to discuss uh, chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians today. Just a couple verses. I just want to discuss some things uh, with you, if you don't mind. So turn to turn your swords to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I will be reading from verse 1 to 13. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the, to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples, examples, and they are, all, they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore... Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is in common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape, that ye may be able to bear it. It's telling us here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that God is not going to allow any temptation to come to you that you won't be able to get away from. And there, there are some people uh, nowadays uh, who are falling for temptations and the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, and they're falling for things that are just, it's unnecessary. They're allowing to, the, their flesh to overcome their spirit. And God wants you to feed your spirit man. And, and then the spirit man comes first. And you're not supposed to feed the fleshly man. And then your spirit man dies, see. So in, in the beginning here, the Jews are being told about um, the different ways that God saved them. He brought them through the desert. He brought them with the the cloud in the sky and the, and the fire by night and Moses and they all got baptized into Moses and they did eat the same spiritual meat. They all ate manna. You know, they experienced blessings that, that our Father God gave them. They, they, they were hungry and they were mad at Moses because this happened and that happened. They were murmuring and murmuring and murmuring like we do in real life. We're murmuring all the time. Nothing's ever good enough sometimes it seems to us, you know. And, and uh, they, were, they were complaining about the, the manna. Well, we've been eating this manna long enough. We want meat. Manna is bread from heaven. Manna means, what is it? And, and it's, it's the bread from heaven. And God was feeding them from his heaven, heavenly throne, giving them bread. And they got tired of eating God's bread. They got tired of God's provision. So what did he do? God sent meat. He says, all right. You don't want my bread? You want to complain? You want to murmur and complain? I'll give you meat. You want meat? I'll give you meat. God gave them so much meat, they were vomiting. Vomiting the meat out. Couldn't blame him. They said they were tired of bread. So, you know, 
they were vomiting the meat out. And then they complained because they were vomiting the meat out. So these are just things that God did to save them. And it says in verse 4, And they all did drink the same spiritual drink. Moses was their pastor. Moses, Miriam, and his sister Miriam, and, and Aaron. And, and they three shepherded them to where they were supposed to go. And, and uh, he taught them about the love of the Lord. He taught them about God the Father. And they had experiences, spiritual experiences with Moses. And some of them had short patience. Some of them saw miracles and still wanted to complain to Moses. And a lot of things that they experienced throughout the years. That God saved them. He, he pulled them out of the enemy's camp. And they still complain. How many of us do that today? God pulls us out of the enemy's camp and we still complain. It's like nothing that he does is good enough for us sometimes, you know? Imagine how he feels. You ever do something for your kids if you have children? Did you ever do something for your kids and it seems like nothing that you do for them is good enough? You buy them an iPod. You know, they want a game. You buy them a game. They want a car, a bike. You buy them a bike they want a car, you know. Nothing you do is good enough. All you're doing is spoiling them. you got to let them learn how to make their own, acquire their own things that they need in life. Amen. When they get to a certain age, they should be working at McDonald's flipping burgers somewhere to buy themselves their first little four or $500 car. <laughs> Amen. Well, that was back in the day. Now they buy ten, eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 cars, you know, with, with a $1,000 payment or whatever, you know. But, uh, yeah, allow your child to learn. Amen. So they won't murmur, you know. If, if they're murmuring and complaining, then they need to work better, do better. Uh, don't do everything for them. Just help them out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So uh, verse um, uh, 5 says, But with many of them God was not well pleased. See, God was upset. He got tired of hearing them complaining all the time. He's God. He's the Father of all good things. And it says, For they were overthrown in the wilderness... God shows his divine displeasure towards them. If you go back in uh, Numbers 26, 65, you'll see in Hebrews 3, 17, you'll see things uh, that pertain to the same thing. They were overthrown in the wilderness. They, uh, they uh, were dry and thirsty and hungry and murmured and complained. And it goes, now these things were, they, these things happened to them. Verse 6 goes on to tell us that these things happened to the Israelites as an example, as examples to you and me. We are supposed to read this, read the Holy Bible. We're supposed to read this Bible as an example. The things that, he, that, that the Jews went through, the Hebrews went through here, it, this Bible, it, things that happened to them are examples uh, so that we can learn from them, so that we can know what to do and what not to do and how to do it. And as long as people don't read the Bible, they're not going to know what to do, what not to do, and how to do it. Amen. It's for an example. This is God's word. The things that happen in here is so that we will not walk in our forefathers' footsteps. Amen. We're to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. By ourselves. Have a relationship with Jesus. And then when we all get together corporately, then we can pray. And we can sing and praise the Lord in church or wherever you go to. Amen. And in verse 7, it, it says, don't, well, verse 6 says, uh, We should not lust after evil things, as also they lusted. And if you go back and read, you'll see the things that Israel lusted after. You know, uh, idols, gods, silver, gold. You know, these things, we're not supposed to lust, at, lust after those things. God's telling us to shun evil. Not to fun, not not to fall for e evil so easily. We're to exercise our right to shun evil. And it's not hard. Whenever a temptation or something comes up to you and you know it's wrong, got to know how to shun that thing. In Jesus' name, I bind you in Jesus' holy name. I'm walking with Jesus. I'm walking holy and I do not like you. You are an abomination unto me. Leave me now. I send you to dry places, never to return, in Jesus' holy name. That's what I got to do. You know, some people don't like to do that because they enjoy whatever it is that's coming up to them. You yeah, hate to admit it, but some people enjoy that thing. They might want to hit that joint. You know, 
they might want to smoke that, uh, drink that Jack Daniels. They might want to drink that beer. You know, they might want to have sex. Fiery, you know, fiery lust. They fall for that, you know. But we are not to fall for that. Read this part of the Bible. <laughs> It'll show you what not to fall for. Okay. Amen. And, and now we can read this part of the Bible. And it'll show us what not to fall for. And neither be idolaters. No idolatry. No idols at all. God said, I will have no other God before me. I want no idols. God said, he comes first. And it says, as some of them had idols. As it is written, the people sat down to eat. And they drank and they rose up to play. Pleasure seekers, revelry. How many people do you know have carnality? They're so carnal that all they think about is partying all the time and, and getting drunk and, and, oh, it's the weekend. Hallelujah. I'm going to have a good time on the weekend. And they laugh and crack jokes about it. And, oh, it's a holiday. You know, the 4th of July. We just had the 4th of July yesterday. And the funny thing about it is, on the 5th of July, I get up early. I love getting up. I love love to get up early. I concentrate on, on God the first 10 minutes of my morning, or, or more, or plus. You know, I talk to God, commune with Him. I pray His Word, you know, I, I, and then I get up, and I know I got up early. I think I got up like 5, 30, 6 o'clock this morning on July 5th, and everybody was gone. There was nobody on Facebook hardly. <laughs> my neighborhood was quiet. You know, it's a worldly carnal festival. But what gets me, though, is pardon me, I hope I'm not murmuring, but what gets me, though, is Christians fall for this, too. Where were the Christians early this morning? They didn't start showing up on my wall. I don't know. I got a lot of people on my wall. I have over, I think, 1,200 people, 1,200 friends. Which isn't much compared to some people, but it's a lot for me. You know, I appreciate it. But I have 1,200 friends on my Facebook wall, and nobody was on. 7.30, 8 o'clock, around 8 o'clock, 8.30 this morning, they started to come on. And I, I wrote something on my wall. I said, all right, Christians, wake up. I said, it was it was a worldly festival, not, not a church meeting. <laughs> yeah, you know. Where was the Christians? They should have been up praising the Lord for another 5th, for another 5th of July. Yeah, I should have thanked God for another day. Everybody was asleep. I don't know where they were at, but I mean, Christians, look, we have to decide. We have to we have to divide the difference between spiritual and carnal. Carnal's down here, and spiritual's up here. You know, yeah, man, you got you got company coming over. You know, you're cooking back, back I guess, barbecue, backyard, front yard barbecue, whatever you're doing. You got kids you know, sliding down into the water and different things going on on the 4th of July. You got the parade and the fireworks and everything. But the next morning, God is still here. Wake up. Get up. Thank you for it. Yesterday. If you had a good, if nobody got drunk or hide up and beat each other up and the police had to come or nobody burnt the house down. Yes. Some people are so into revelry and partying that they don't even realize that they should be concentrating on the word of God and what it is God would want them to do, what they should be doing for the Lord God and for his kingdom. Amen. Um, and it says, like in verse 7, they, they, people sat down to eat. All they did was eat, drink, and play. There's more to life than eating and drinking and playing. Where's the work? Where's the word? Amen. And I know we all know, you probably know some people that do the same thing. They play around so much that you wonder how they're living, how they make it through. Like nothing is serious to them. There are just some people where they're, you know, their souls are going straight to hell on Judgment Day because they're so busy drinking uh, I, I know some people that drank so bad that the, del that the, the, the doctor said that if, if they would stop drinking, they'd probably die. Instead of having blood in their veins, they had alcohol in their veins. You know, just partying. Just, I don't know if it's a woe is me syndrome or what's going on, but some people, you ever see some people just party and drink until their eyes turn yellow and orange and red? And you can tell they're unhealthy people. But they just won't stop. 
and nothing nothing happens. They get sick, they drink on, you know. And even people who do dope, they get sick, they get different diseases, a hepatitis, and they just party on, shoot up, smoke on. It just doesn't stop. You wonder where these people's minds are. And then verse 8 says, um, Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. This is where twenty-three thousand Hebrews died in one day because of their sins. If you look back in Hebrew history, you know, these are giving us warnings. Chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians is giving us warnings about Hebrew history. See, there's more to, the, to God said, study to show thyself approved. And you have to study. In order to understand a Hebrew God, you must study Hebrew history. He gives you the word here in the Bible. And then you go to his people, their library, and study up on why this said that. And why so-and-so was in, in, in rule at that time. Why so, this king was, was the king at that time. Why Israel got caught at that time. What they were doing at that time. Who was whose son and who was whose daughter. And why did they rule in court the way they did with so-and-so in the Bible. You have to go back and look at all their laws and commandments and, and statutes and things that they had to understand what they meant by this, see? You know, you have to study this kind of stuff. You, it's good to study. Go deeper, go further. I have the, the New Jerusalem Bible that includes books that, that uh, I'm looking at it now, if you're wondering, and look at my little library there, but try the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the New Jerusalem Bible, the Pentateuch, the Septuagint. God showed me that word in a dream. I was dreaming one night, years about, t t maybe 10 years ago. And I didn't know what Septuagint was. I woke up in the morning because I write down my dreams. That's a good thing to get into, writing down your dreams. I woke up in the morning and I was like, Septuagint? And I spelled the word right when I was writing it in my notebook. S-E-P-T-U-A. G-I-N-T. And I went up to a, a city by me, to a, a, a library up there, a place, a bookstore, and I asked them what it was. And they gave it to me and I bought it and learned a lot from it. It's, it's, uh, it's the, the Bible, uh, the Hebrew Bible, before it was canonized into the 66 books the way it is. It, there's some books in there that weren't canonized, but when you read them, you learn a lot from them. Oh my, I, I can go on about that, about some things that I learned. Blew my mind. Blew my mind. Amen. And I, this, this book here, whenever they got together back in the day, you know, uh, they wanted to leave out Esther. Esther doesn't mention God's name once. But yes, she's in his Bible. Because there is a lesson to be learned from it. She went to God and fasted and prayed, but he, she, the, his name, he wasn't mentioned in the book. He wasn't talked directly about or to in, to in the book. That's what I want to say. He wasn't talked directly to in the book, but they canonized Esther. She's in the Bible, so... Study to show thyself approved. You'll find out these things. Uh, then verse 9 says, Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of the serpents. I'm sure you heard about the story about how the serpents ate them up, bit them all up, killed, killed a lot of them. Because they kept tempting God. You know, they kept, they kept tempted uh, doing things that they weren't supposed to do, and blasphemy, and, and, and sexual sins. Uh, anything you can mention that is as this witchcraft against the Lord, rebellion, deception, cheating, fornicating, adultery, wickedness. Amen. And verse 10 says, Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. See? They murmured so much that God just gave them up to their own lust, their own, their own minds, you know. 
And so they just became, some of them became out of their mind. And the destroyer destroyed them. They destroyed themselves, actually. Murmuring turns you over to the destroyer, complaining. If you notice, when you watch TV, a lot of the uh, com uh, comedians now on TV, if you watch them, they, uh, Jewish, Jewish comedians especially, crack jokes about how Jewish people complain. <laughs> you know, it's down throughout the history about how they complained. I watched a lot of Jewish show, Jewish uh, actors on. I love uh, Jewish uh, uh, comedy and stuff. I love it. And, and you hear them talk about how Jews complain. You know, and they're not the only ones. But I won't go any deeper. Ah, I refuse. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Oh, Lord. And then verse 11 says, Now all these things happened unto them for examples. And they are written. See, it's recorded for our good use. For our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Listen to what I'm telling you. Study the word. Study Hebrew history. Learn names. I, I want you to learn the who, when, what, where, and whys in this Bible. Who's speaking? What are they talking about? When did it happen? Where are they at? And why are they speaking this way? Why are they speaking? Like, for instance, you get those people that don't believe in female preachers. I've been battling this since 2000. Well, since I've been on the Internet, 2003. But even before I got on the Internet in 2003. When he says in the Bible, let your women be silent in churches. That does not mean that women should not speak in church at all. That was for that time then. Because at that time in Hebrew history, women were embarrassing their husbands. The men sat on one side of the church. And that's how they had it, see? And the women sat on the other side of the church. And when a man would get up and say something that the woman didn't like or disagreed with, she'd stand up in the church and disagree in front of everybody their private business or, or make her husband look bad. That's what, see? God likes things done decently in order. And that's what he meant when he said, let your women be silent in churches. See, it, women been preaching since the beginning of time. As I told you, uh, Moses, Aaron, and, and his sister Miriam. They were pastor and they were pastor and a sheep. They were shepherds of the flock of Israel. And Deborah, the judge. I won't go all into that because I've been talking about it for years. But there are women ministered. The Bible says women ministered unto Jesus. Um, oh, uh, many times. Not just once. It's not in there just once. In fact, I was just reading it this morning. Women ministered unto Jesus, and there are, I have a whole women's, women ministry um, manuscript, manuscript, if you want it, write me at revessie at yahoo.com, amen, women ministers, you'll see in Luke 8, verses 2 to 3, women minister to Jesus, in different ways, I think Luke 8, 2 to 3 talks about food or whatever, but we, they did more than that, um, so don't murmur. And now all these things happened unto them for examples, for they're written for us. Wherefore let him that think he stand take heed lest he fall. And verse 13 says, there has no, There's no kind of temptation that can come to you that you cannot get out of. Some people stay in it and some people fall for it because they like it. The Bible says in verse 13, first course, uh, 10, 13, it says, uh, B, <laughs> it says, God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. God is not going to let anything, any kind of temptation come to you that you cannot handle. It might seem strong. It might seem bad at the time, but you can handle it. In Jesus' name, handle it. Don't sit around waiting for the outcome. That's how so many people get in trouble. They say, well, if I just do this, it's just a little pleasure, just for a little time, a little bit of time. You get that little bit of pleasure and you're stuck for a couple of years. You could, you could be stuck, get into something again. It takes years to get out of that thing. 
Don't sign the contract if the contract's not from Jesus. Amen. God makes a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Amen. And then he goes on to talk about uh, wherefore my dearly beloved flee from idolatry. We spoke about that. Amen. And then he says in verse 16, of 15, he says, I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? For we are all. It says, for we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. We are partakers of the bread, of the body of Christ. We must act like the body of Christ. Think of how Jesus acted according to this word, God's holy word. How did Jesus act? WWJD. When you are a part of Jesus' body, how did Jesus act in certain situations? Do that thing. He's our example, major example. He's all God and all man. He was there. He did it. If Jesus did it, we can do it. What did he do? What did, what, what did Jesus do when people came up to him gossiping or, or, or accusing someone of doing something like they never did it themselves? Come on, you know all the answers to this. What do you say? You know, let the first person without sin cast the first stone. You know, so you do the same thing to people. Somebody comes up to you and starts talking about somebody out the clear blue sky, dogging them for no reason. Just tell them, say, yeah, but you know, we all have, you know, we all have problems. Nobody's perfect, you know. <laughs> you know, you don't want to agree with them, but you just tell them nobody's perfect. You know, we all have problems. You're telling them in a nice way. You're not perfect either. You're presenting here. You're presenting this person to me as a demon and a devil. You're not perfect either. You know? They don't want you to bring their stuff up. So, when you're tempted to do things, your flesh causes you to fall for it. It likes it. The old man likes this kind of stuff. And you have to fight that old man. To keep him, see, if, like I said, if you feed your spirit more and feed your flesh less, you won't fall for this stuff. Um, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Took my tabs off. Okay, here it is. You know... As far as fleshly lusts and, and temptations are concerned, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11 tells us, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Stop doing things that you know is bad for your soul. Stop doing things that could put you in hell. So, to answer the age-old question, is masturbation wrong? Yeah. Isn't it a fleshly lust? If you're not married, the Bible says, if they cannot contain themselves, you know, don't let them burn. Let them marry. And these people that are abusing masturbation, that's, that's fulfilling the flesh, the lust of the flesh. Excuse me for going there, but hey, as Paul said, do you hate me because I tell you the truth? So God bless you. I hope you got something out of this. Amen. 
God is not going to allow you to go through any temptation that you cannot handle. Call on Jesus. When you're going through any type of temptation, don't look around and wonder if you can help it, if you can do something about it. Call on Jesus and watch what happens. Guarantee when you call on Jesus, I guarantee you that when you call on Jesus, He will help. Keep your relationship open and clean with him. Amen. Well, Reverend Essie signing off. Thanks for listening. God bless you. And have a good 5th of July, 2011. Hope to see you 5th of July, 2012. Unless Jesus comes back first. God bless.